the new coach is in the saddle at the moment because remember we always keep asking how new is he really and then we've got a friendly this Saturday uh, which of course he'll file the boys out to see if we can get some results on that against Botswana well we're joined now by Mr. Henry Kodua sports journalist thank you for coming on today again thank you very much so well, now that um, uh, Stephen Keshi is in the saddle uh, we still have the same structure in the NFF, by the way. So now, w w what do we even expect? Do we, how do we look forward to that match? To say, uh, do we have fresh players, or isn't it the same 90% <laughs> of the players? Or what's, what's going on in the sports world? Well, um, first and foremost, um, I, I want to commend the NFF for, you know, you know, joining the international community, you know, to observe the FIFA free uh, day. Okay. Uh, for not allowing to pass like that without us, you know, having something to get us busy. Um, as it were, for the ordinary football follower, it will look like we are wasting our time playing friendlies when we missed out on the big one, you know, the Nations Cup itself. But I think uh, they have done, the NFF have done the right thing by arranging a series of friendlies for the Super Eagles, irrespective of whoever is there. Okay, but, but there. In, in what context is this friendly now? Is it in the context of a football development plan or just taking advantage of the FIFA free day or playing the like I said before. to play a friendly for the sake of it? It's so to what extent or to what intent or purpose will that be then? You know, um... To the, the, the development of football, you know, has any, nothing to do with friendly games. Uh, I think uh, the last time I was here, I was telling you that the rot in Nigerian football didn't just start today. And that uh, if we were to, you know, uh, what we are doing now is just uh, cosmetic. You know, firing a coach today, bringing another coach, you know, to make a certain group of people happy. So that's not uh, an... Um, uh, a way to look at it, you know, to resolve the problem. But here we are, we are stuck with Keshi now, and uh, there's a change of guard, as it were. And um, we have to move forward. Uh, I think... Can, uh, can we? Yeah, well, you know, that is what is perceived uh, to be, because when Keshi comes in now, he uses the opportunity to familiarize with the players, you know, that, uh, you know, he inherited. So, as uh, uh, as it were, from uh, Samsung Siasia, because uh, about 90% of those players are Samsung's, uh, uh, were Samsung, uh, players of, in uh, Samsung's team. Uh, so, um, uh, 23 players invited, just a new boy, you know, Jude Aneke, who is the only person new in that team, you know. And okay, uh, but by the way, it's, it's Botswana, right, that were playing this art? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then, um, what was wrong with playing... You know, teams that will really test the grid rather than going for a Botswana. I mean, there are those who don't even remember if Botswana participates in the Kosafa Cup, let alone uh, playing them at a d this level. I think uh, this, some of these friendlies we arrange beforehand. You don't arrange friendlies uh, in 24 hours. You arrange them ahead. And uh, I think the plan was, uh, you know, uh, afoot long before uh, Siasia was uh, sacked. And, uh, you know, friendlies, you don't have to play. It's not every time you get the opportunity to play big teams. But the argument all this time has been that we are not even playing friendlies at all. And that, uh, you know, we shouldn't be, uh, you know, uh, looking down smaller opponents, thinking that, uh, you know, they are too small for us to play with. We should be looking for teams like Argentina, Brazil, and the rest of them. But... Sometimes the nitty-gritty involved in getting some teams is always so uh, difficult. So sometimes the ones available, you know. And besides, you know, Botswana, Zambia, we are playing Zambia on Tuesday. Shortly after, was, after playing Botswana and Benin, uh, we are playing Zambia. Uh, those teams uh, qualify for the Nations Cup. So uh, it's a good thing that, uh, you know, it will, it will test them. You know, they want it. No, you know, they want those games. To so it's going to be more and, beneficial uh, to, to them, them than us. Yes, uh, to them, we are a quality opposition. And, uh, but to us? For, them. for us, we just want to participate and uh, um, you know, uh, take advantage of the FIFA window. And uh, for Keshi, it's an opportunity for him to know the boys.
So, so w what is he going to bring to the table that, uh, for instance, former or previous coaches have not tried before? I don't see anything that he's bringing on. You know, in, you know it's nothing. Because uh, bef even when Sassi was uh, before Sassi was sacked, he went to London to play Ghana, and he pulled a draw. So these friendlies, I think, primarily, you know, uh, like I said before, it's just for Casey to use it to know his players, you know, and uh, uh, forge a way ahead. Because uh, he's been making some statements about attitude. Yeah. Uh, players should adopt a new attitude, and uh, so on and so forth. But the, the biggest problem, you know, and uh, which a lot of analysts feel that uh, is the is the is the, is the, is the real uh, problem in the team it has to do with indiscipline, and uh, people are saying that look, if uh, Kesha's coach in Togo could not handle a player like uh, Emmanuel Adebayo, you know the Nigerian born Togolese, who eventually led to a sack, you know in charge, you know uh, in uh, in uh, Togo, then. How is he going to handle people like John Mikel B and Yama <laughs> and the rest of them who I who I who have uh, all been invited back into the oh. team like now? Let's talk about this. Uh, SCN says that uh, uh, you're talking about NFF and Keshi. If you do not tackle the issue of player commitment and finding committed players home and abroad, he's bound to fail. In terms of player commitment, what? How much can he actually do? There's not much he can do. Why not? Um, you see, like I said just now, I said just one player, Emmanuel Adebayo, got Keshi sacked in Togo. He could not handle the, the, the brazen attitude of Emmanuel Adebayo, and that's why he didn't go to the World Cup, even though he qualified Togo for the World Cup. No, was it so, because uh, Togo, didn't, if they had other quality players, quote-unquote, in the mould of Adebayo, would they have been sacked? It would have been more difficult If he had other people who could deliver mm. in the absence of Adebayo. No, it has nothing to do with delivering. It has something to do with how the people see Adebayo. They value Adebayo much more than their coach. That was why the, 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 uh, the Football Federation did not stand by him. There are times that a, a Football Federation will tell the players, listen, we stand by our coach. We think you are the bad eggs here, and uh, we stand by our coach, like Sani Lulu did with Amodu. Uh, don't forget, Amodu drew a match, a very important match in, 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 in uh, Abuja, 2-2, two -two, the same way Siasia did. And we needed that match badly. We needed to win. We were even leading, and Tunisia equalized, and uh, all hell was let loose. They said, sack Amodu. Sani Lulu and the board had a meeting and said, look, we'll, we'll swim and sink with him. And that's how Amodu stayed. Okay, but are, are national teams now weaker than clubs in terms of this uh, commitment and discipline? Because yes. at club level, can this happen? And for them, yes, to definitely. Say, we stand by the player. Club size, the coach. Club size are stronger than national teams now as a result of this. Because what John Mikel will be, for instance, will try with Siasia or the Super Eagles, he can't try it with uh, the new boss there now, uh, you know, um, AVB. He can't try it in, uh, in a Chelsea. He can't try it with Mourinho when Mourinho was there, or Scolari, or Hiddink, or any of one of the coaches he has. Played under at Chelsea. Neither with Yama, who, who, who until recently has been on the, warming the bench in his club, you know, in, in France. So, commitment has been the biggest problem in the Super Eagles. And until that is done, I don't, you know, I agree with a lot of people who say we will continue to fail until our players. So, what am I saying, in essence? That for Keshi to succeed, you know, simply put, for Keshi to succeed, he has to. First of all, look at the, the structure of the team and figure out a way whereby he can get players to play for him, can get his own players who are loyal. And I am happy that he has decided to beam his satellite on the, you know, the league. But he will have a problem there because even the league is not running properly and um, we have been having problems. And the, 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 the country is as good as the league. It parades. How can he get players to play for him if the players have, uh, hypothetically now, an issue with uh, the country or the football, the FA? But I, I don't think, most times, players don't have problems with the FA. They have problems with their coaches and their style. You know, the, the, well, uh, I thought sports uh, uh, journalists had always talked about 
poor organization and administration. I agree, but sometimes, even in, in, uh, in spite of this poor organization and whatever, we have never really had good organization in our football because NFF or NFF, uh, NFF as they used to be uh, called, uh, exist in Nigeria. And so they are not immune from the peculiar problems of the Nigerian nation state. You know, for instance, corruption is pandemic and so on. So they are not immune from it. But in spite of this, we have always found a way to excel. I mean, in 1996, we won the Olympic gold. It wasn't because the NFA was particularly outstanding in organization, whatever. We won the Nations Cup in 1994, not because the NFA. In fact, during the 1994, we didn't have an NFA chairman. We had a sole administrator in Amos Adamu, you know, a, a sole administrator. So, you see, it's not the question of, you know, it's players and coaches, you know, the, 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 the disagreements in team. And once play, players have disagreement, it also happens abroad. Players have disagreement with their coaches. These co uh, players, we, we somehow, you know, form themselves to a clique and frustrate the coach out, like they did Scolari in a, in a Chelsea. They, they frustrate him. These things you cannot prove, but it happens all the time. All right. All yeah, right. so for <coughs> Keshi, yeah. my advice, because he's coming home, it's like homecoming, playing at Obey Stadium, because he used to be the captain of the New Nigerian Bank football club in those days that ruled the waves then, won the WAF Cup and so on. He is coming home on a familiar turf. He will be welcomed on a day of Shomole celebrating, you know, his third year, you know, as governor, all of that. But it goes beyond that. He must, first of all, you know, look at his team, get players who are committed to play for him. And that is when we make progress.